Good morning, Sam. How are we doing today? Nothing could diminish Ralph Teeter's passion for invention. Born in Hagerstown, Indiana in 1890, he was tutored in the mathematics and use of tools associated with the machine shop by his father and uncles. By the age of 13, Teeter had built an automobile of his own design that was capable of traveling 25 miles per hour. This was merely the beginning of an amazing and diverse career. But before sharing the inspirational story of Mr. Teeter, let me give a shout out to the boys of the road crew for our theme song. If you're looking for great toe-tapping tunes or a bit of inspiration for a road trip, check out their music at roadcrew66.com. Now, let me share the incredible story of Mr. Ralph Teeter. His family was building bicycles when Ralph was born. A few years later, a relative employed by the Chicago and Northwestern Railroad asked the Teeter brothers if they could build a small inspection car, pedal-powered like a bicycle. This project was so successful, they formed a company to build production models and later adapted it to use gasoline power. Before building a car at the age of 13 with tutelage from the family, Teeter had earned a local reputation as a wonder kid for his gadgets. The car building endeavor took that reputation national when a Manhattan newsroom tapped out the story of a mere boy in the farm country near the Indiana-Ohio border who was doing impressive mechanical stuff. In 1912, Teeter graduated from the University of Pennsylvania with a degree in mechanical engineering. His first employment after graduation was at a shipyard where under contract for the United States Navy, he developed a process for dynamically balancing steam turbines that operated under shattering heat and pressure. This method would later become the standard practice in maritime propulsion. Upon completion of the contract, he returned to Indiana, set up an office, and began cranking out an array of inventions. One of these was a revolutionary fluid-operated gear shift to which Bendix bought the rights. This was the forerunner of the modern automatic transmission. The Teeter family then reorganized its company to produce piston rings and renamed it Perfect Circle, and they installed Ralph as the lead engineer. By the dawning of World War II, something like 85% of all trains, automobiles, trucks, airplanes manufactured in the United States used piston rings produced by this company. The company also manufactured a variety of automotive products, and Teeter helped refine and improve their designs. He also initiated projects that made the company one of the first automotive suppliers to market its products through motorsports, and negotiated deals that made the company a major defense contractor. His sense of touch became legendary on the factory floor. Once, while talking with an employee, he stopped abruptly. Referring to the castings in his hand, he said that they didn't vary by more than two thousandths of an inch. Upon measuring them, it was confirmed that he was correct. Teeter would assume the presidency of the company in 1946. Teeter had also been working on an automotive speed control device during World War II, and he received a patent for this in 1945 and launched manufacturing under the name Speedostat. The, de not, the device would later become known generically as cruise control. Teeter was also a leader in the development of educational programs. After assuming the presidency of the Society of Automotive Engineers, he initiated apprenticeship programs as well as high school level shop classes. After retiring from active business, he was a major benefactor of Earlham College in Richmond, Indiana. He is enshrined in the Automotive Hall of Fame, and he is one of SAE International's most prestigious engineering awards, named in Teeter's honor. Teeter died in 1982. Perhaps the most amazing part of the Teeter story is that he suffered from what many people, in similar circumstances, would consider to be a debilitating injury. In, 19, in 1895, Ralph was carving with a knife when it slipped and penetrated his eye. Within a year, Teeter was totally and permanently blind, but he never let his condition define him, nor did he reference it. Now, how's that for an inspirational story? 
Hey, as our way of saying thank you to supporters, we're now featuring exclusive content such as stories like this on our crowdfunding site on the Patreon platform at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash Jim Hinckley's America. You'll also find excerpts of these fascinating stories on our website at jimhinckleysamerica.com. And as we're talking about the website, if you're planning a Route 66 Odyssey, this is your portal to a world of adventure. One last item, and then we'll wrap up this episode of 5 Minutes with Jim. And that's a shout out to this week's sponsor, the delightful and charming village of Cuba, Missouri. Start with a night at the Time Capsule Wagon Wheel Motel and set aside at least a day to discover the many surprises that make this a favorite Route 66 stop for me and my dearest friend. I promise that you won't be disappointed. Well, that's it, folks. I hope that you can join us next week for another adventure on the back roads in Jim Hinckley's America. Adios, mi amigos.